credit to viewer Televiper and our Discord resident thrash aficionado Tycho for several of these recommendations. It's because, you know, real. Recognize real. These are 15 killer underrated thrash metal albums you may not have heard before. We're starting with Solstice with Solstice in 1992. This Florida thrash metal band includes Rob Barrett of Cannibal Corpse, Mark Van Erp of Monstrosity, and Dennis Munaz and Alex Marquez of Demolition Hammer. This is their debut album, and it is a slapper of a record, one that easily could have made my 90s thrash metal albums that don't suck list. I can hear some of the death metal tendencies of the band members coming through, but make no mistake that this is still a thrash album with the occasional groove metal elements of Pantera coming through. Super sick record, the first of these recommendations that I listened to in Ultimate ultimately kickstarting the idea of doing this list in the first place. Next up we have Hypnosia with Extreme Hatred in 2000. Jumping forward a decade here for the sole full-length album from this now-defunct Swedish band, the harsh vocals border on blackened and at least draw comparisons to the German Big Four. Really ripping stuff, heavy on the violence that may also appeal to fans of things like Skeleton Witch as much as the classic stuff. It's crazy fast and loaded with killer hooks. Rip to drummer Michael Sostrand, who passed away in 2004 at only 27, he really kills it on this thing. And really, the entire trio just plays together so well here as a unit. Because strictly is a well-oiled machine. Then we have Depressive Age with First Depression, also in 1992. Another killer 90s era album, and this one from Germany, but going for a more power and traditional heavy metal inspired vocal performance. My reaction to that style tends to be mixed, but here especially thanks to the more progressive songwriting and technical performances really sells it to me. I definitely recommend this to fans of things like Toxic and Coroner. Really impressive riffing, soloing, and overall presentation that puts it well above most of what the genre was sadly churning out at this time. Nice variety and texturing song to song as well to keep things interesting, where a track like Beyond Illusions sound quite different from another like The Light. And more great drumming on the latter, I might add. Then we have Necromantheon with Visions of Trismegistos in 2021. <laughs> Leaping forward again almost to present day, it's time to get Norway on the map with this band's third album. Absolutely face-melting guitar work on this one that is as infectious as it is fast and complemented with the super defiant vocals definitely giving me some power trip energy. Add lyrics about mythology and some added atmosphere on tracks like Neptune Descent and Scorched Death and this is just an all-around wicked package. Every song is top-notch and at just 32 minutes it blazes by and leaves you ready to start it all over again. Seriously, just hit play on the opening track or any track for that matter, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Well, what are you waiting for? Then we have Anacrusis with Manic Impressions in 1991. Manic Impressions is the third full-length album from this former Missouri band. More interesting takes on a progressive approach with both hook-heavy headbangers like Opener Paint a Picture and more dynamic and varied arrangements like Explained Away. I'll admit that I'm not always in love with the vocal performance, but the sometimes atypical choices are also part of what keeps me intrigued here. Ken will definitely keep you on your toes with his unpredictable shifts between pretty much every thrash vocal style you can think of, giving tracks like Grey is Still Black a kind of Faith No More energy. Major points for presentation, even if the execution can be a little hit and miss, but definitely a unique listen regardless. Y'all, we still have plenty more albums to go, but as usual, if you're enjoying the video so far, hit the like button and let me know down in the comments what are your favorite underrated thrash metal albums you think more people should know about. But next up, we have Antichrist with Sinful Birth in 2017. <laughs> Back to Scandinavia, this time moving to Sweden with the second album from this band formed in 2005. And interestingly, despite being one of the newer albums on this list, you wouldn't know that based on the style and production. Honestly, this sounds like a speed metal influenced album straight out of the 80s. Feeling comparisons on this one to everything from Razor and Venom, or on the more modern side, perhaps Midnight as well with those fun jangly guitars on Burned Beyond Recognition. And fitting to the sacrilegious band name and album title, I love the dark malevolent atmosphere that permeates 
to each track, it really does feel like the soundtrack to some wicked debaucherous party engaging in every blasphemous act you can think of. Sacrilicious. Then we have Realm with Society in 1990. <laughs> Nineteen ninety was a huge swan song era for early thrash metal, and with more technical performances and power metal inspired vocals a la Toxic, this time out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a place I've spent plenty of time in my early years. The falsettos here are top notch without ever feeling corny or annoying to me. This is their second and as of the time of this recording final album, and it's a shame given the level of talent on display. Some seriously funky bass work here too, from Steve Post as another highlight to an already all around impressive album. Frankly, with all the old thrash acts like Morbid Saint coming out of the woodwork with new material after decades away. It would be great to hear something from these guys if they still have it in them. Then we have Ominum with Monument in 2022. Some very deathy thrash metal with plenty of Vader vibes for this Gothenburg Sweden band that I discovered in my Best of Bandcamp Underground series. Solid mix of straight for the throat riffs and blunt force vocals with some more progressive master of puppet style songwriting. There's even a three part epic and songs go as long as eight minutes doing a pretty good job of pacing things out to keep them interesting and digging the occasional more again kind of Lamb of God sounding groove metal moments as well. The vocals could use a little bit more variety and finesse but overall definitely a still running band that you should give a peek. You can also check out their latest EP War for Peace that just dropped late last year. You're on your way. You're on your way. Then we have Believer with Dimensions in 1993. <laughs> Definitely a weird one here from this Pennsylvania technical and progressive thrash metal band, getting some more coroner vibes on this one, but really the weirdness also crosses the line into Voivod territory and beyond at times. There's also this strange contrast of the complex arrangements with the more straightforward kind of crossover feel of the vocals, but then also some eerie spoken word. To flesh things out further, I see everything on this band's similar artist page on Metal Archives from Atheist and Cynic to Extol and Confessor. They even bring in some strings and operatic female vocals later on. On a critical note, I do think some of these compositions could be trimmed down just a bit to weed out the repetition, but generally there's always something new and exciting just around the corner. Then we have Cryptosis with Bionic Swarm in 2021. Along with Necropanther, this is one of those underdog bands that I really like to repeatedly shout from the rooftops. Based out of the Netherlands, their awesome take on technical and progressive sci-fi thrash to earn this record a spot on my top 10 albums of 2021 and make it a highly recommended album for fans of Vector. Expect endless hooks and diverse shredding along with plenty of great scream-along vocals to go with them on tracks like Death Technology and Decipher, but also plotting industrialized moments that would be right at home on a Godflesh album as with Prospect of Immortality. At times, these performances even remind me of Dream Theater's tighter moments, but with a much harsher vocal presentation. You do not want to miss it. Then we have Epidemic with Decameron in 1992. More death-infused thrash metal, this time from California. Decameron is the band's sophomore album following up their 1989 debut, and it certainly keeps things heavy. The groove-heavy riffing definitely shares some DNA with the more industrial influences this era had on bands like Creator and Napalm Death, but without sacrificing its thrash metal roots. And then tracks like Hate in particular are just pure balls-to-the-wall shred akin to early Slayer. I might also add some comparisons to Demolition Hammer, though I'd argue that the death metal influence may be even stronger here. Then we have Frost Helm with The Endless Winter in 2015. <laughs> I absolutely fell in love with this North Dakota band with this debut album, and especially with the declining quality of modern day Skeleton Witch, it was exactly what I needed on that front. This is black and thrash, heavy on the thrash, so much so that the band refers to it as thrash and black. I called it the toxic waltz in a blizzard. I can almost picture Abbath and Quorthon silently nodding approval with crossed arms at these insanely fast tremolos, wild palm mute alternations, shrieking treble heavy chords and ripping solos. And yet there's something about the thick chug patterns and cadence of the screams that manages to infuse the Bay Area scene into the otherwise icy riffage. Tonight's forecast, a freeze is coming. Then we have Sacrifice with Forward to Termination in 1987. Sacrifice. 
rewinding back to the 80s for the sophomore album from this Canadian band. Based on the number of reviews for this one on Metal Archives, I have a feeling that this album may be a bit better known than some of the others here, but it was new to me and we all seem to enjoy it, so why not? And while it's also far from the most innovative album on this list, it makes up for that with its simple but effective execution of that classic 80s sound and rebellious attitude. Fantastic production with that retro reverb to further complement harsh, violent energy, and plenty of sick riffs and rumbling bass work, getting some Dark Angel and violence vibes. Then we have Terrifier with Trample the Weak, Devour the Dead in 2024. The most recent album on this list from this British Columbia band, they initially stole my heart with their 2017 sophomore effort, but this third album went above and beyond, in my opinion. From the first chorus of Trial by Combat, I was totally hooked. Using the raging thrash attack of bands like Exodus with some wild melodic death metal riffs, it's a veritable fire hose of hooks and shredding solos that should please old school and modern metal fans alike. Check out Bones of the Slain or Grinding the Blade as well. Renee Wilkinson clearly sold his soul to the devil and devoured the souls of his contemporaries to achieve this level of guitar proficiency. I'm gonna sleep on it and contact a notary. I'm a notary. I'm gonna sleep on it. And then we have Nasty Savage with Indulgence, also in 1987. <laughs> The second album from this Florida band, also coming to you from the classic 80s era. I'm hearing plenty of crossover energy, especially in the majority of the vocals, but they also throw in some flashier solos and falsetto high notes for good measure. Another one where I love the bass contributions as well. Just pure headbang worthy horns in the air stuff with infectious standouts like Stabbed in the Back, XXX, Indulgence, and Inferno. Another tight start to finish listen that's just under 39 minutes without a second wasted. Once more, my thanks to the fans for turning me on to these albums so that I can now pay them forward to you. Y'all check out this playlist for more thrash metal content or this video for something different. And again, let me know down in the comments what else would you add to this list of underrated thrash albums. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.